Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we'll be discussing six interview questions for staff accountants. And staff accountants typically have experience between one and two years. And so in the past, we've covered the interview questions for a junior accountant. The difference between a junior and a staff accountant is that a junior accountant is someone who's just starting out fresh out of college without experience. With a staff accountant, you have some experience. So it could be six months, a year, up to two years sometimes. So this is the basic difference between junior and staff accountant. A link up here to the junior accountant interview questions. And let's dive into today's video talking about the staff accountant interview questions. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. My name is Bill Hanna, I'm the financial controller. I'm a licensed CPA in the great state of New York, and I have over 15 years of experience in the field of finance, where I started out at PricewaterhouseCoopers as an auditor, and then I transitioned out to private industry, and then I worked my way up from a financial analyst position all the way up to a corporate controller position, which is what I do today. And this channel is all about giving you the summary or the juice of my experience over the last decade and a half. And I do this here in the YouTube channel, as well as on my website, through blog posts, an online course, and templates. So go ahead and check that out as well. Before we dive into today's questions, I wanna give a huge shout out to my first patron on Patreon, Alicia D. Welcome to the group, Alicia. And for those of you who don't know about Patreon, this is a group that I started a couple of weeks ago where I share with you a deeper layer of my knowledge and I share with you all of the docs that I have here in every video in the channel. And there is a chat function where you can ask me questions and we get together and share our knowledge. So go ahead and check it out. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. All right, so jumping in the first question. The first question is, how do you measure success of an accounts receivable function? So this is more of a question for someone who's applying for a job as a staff accountant on the accounts receivable side. And in this question of measuring success in accounts receivable, the hiring manager is looking for you to tell them what the job is, right? So they want to understand if you know what the job is uh, through understanding how success looks like, right? So uh, basically the things that they want to hear are things like timely billing. So basically accounts receivable is about billing, right? So you're creating invoices to customers. So the important thing about them uh, is timely uh, of issuance of these invoices, right? So timely billing that customers are getting their invoices on time, right? So when the customers receive their invoices on time, it means that the company also can close its books faster, right? So sending invoices timely means closing the books timely, right? So this shows your awareness between the connection, the connection between accounts receivable and closing the books and records. And the other thing is faster collection. So when you send the invoices uh, on a timely basis to the customer, then you have a faster collection from the customer. So this shows that you can close the loop uh, from sending an invoice to closing the books and faster collection. So that's for invoicing. Now the other measure of success for accounts receivable is collection and faster collection from the customer. So for you to have a faster collection from the customer, you need to be monitoring AR aging or accounts receivable aging. And we've discussed AR aging in the past on this channel, but basically what AR aging is, is breaking down the accounts receivable by customer and by time period, showing where a customer is uh, 30 days due, 60 days, 90 days and then maybe 120 days past due, obviously the longer it takes from a customer, the higher the likelihood that you're not gonna collect the AR, right? So monitoring AR aging is huge. And then the other piece to this is following up with customers, right? So you follow up, you send an email with an account statement. Uh, so you look at the AR aging and look at the customers who are late on paying and sending an email reminder uh, with an account statement. So to summarize, it's um, timely billing, sending the invoices on time, which yields faster closing of the books and faster collection, and the faster collection is achieved via monitoring uh, accounts receivable aging and following up with the customer. And a bonus tip here, if you wanna impress the hiring manager, you speak to day sales outstanding. So one of the KPIs or the key performance indicators for accounts receivable is uh, day sales outstanding. I'm gonna leave a link up here to day sales outstanding in one of the videos where I discuss it in detail. So DSO or day sales outstanding is a KPI that measures the length of time it takes for a company to collect the cash from the sales, right? So from creating the invoices from the sale all the way to collection of cash. So measuring DSO is a good way for someone who works in accounts receivable to make sure that they are collecting their invoices timely. All right, the second question on my list is how do you measure success for an accounts payable function? So accounts payable obviously is the other side of the coin to accounts receivable. In accounts receivable, you are sending out invoices to customers and collecting the cash with accounts payable, you are receiving invoices from vendors and suppliers and paying them out, right? So how do you measure success for that? 
One of the first things is going to be uh, timely payments. So you make sure that you're paying your uh, vendors and suppliers on time, right? So uh, this entails you receiving the invoices, usually via email, sometimes via regular mail, and having a way of uh, keeping track of these invoices, right? So you save it to a folder, for example, in your computer, and you make sure that you're keeping track of the payment terms, right? So the payment terms could be net 30, net 15, or do upon receipt, whatever the case is, you keep track of that and make sure the payments are made on time. Usually the way this is done is via an accounting software or a billing software like bill.com or Topalti or any of those systems. And then you uh, enter the vendor information with the payment terms and then you can keep track of it electronically and the system will alert you when you have to pay an invoice, right? So this is the first thing, timely payment is hugely important for accounts payable, right? The other measure of success for accounts payable is gonna be the monitoring of the aging of accounts payable. So just like you monitor the aging of accounts receivable by customer and by time frame, you also can download uh, from whatever package you're using, QuickBooks or Bill.com or whatever software you're using for accounts payable, you can down download an aging schedule that shows you by vendor and by time frame which vendor is due and which vendor is past due, right? So when you monitor the, monitor the aging schedule, then you can make a decision on which vendors need to be paid right now or yesterday, which, uh, which vendors uh, will be paid next week and the week after that, right? So that's how you create a game plan of how to pay your vendors. The other thing is uh, the accurate collection and entry of vendor information, right? So when you get a new vendor or supplier to the company, usually you have a process of getting the information from this vendor. This process could be a paper process. You send them a PDF form to fill out by email, or it could be a process via QuickBooks or Bell.com where they get an electronic uh, email that shows them how to enter the information. So you gotta be able to collect the information from your vendor and keep it, uh, keep an accurate vendor information. And then responding to vendor inquiries. This is a huge part of accounts payable, right? Responding to vendor inquiries. Usually you'll get an email uh, asking for uh, the payment status. You gotta be able to look uh, in the accounting system and figure out the status of the payment and then respond to the vendor, let them know when they expect to see, uh, when they can expect to see the payment. Also, the other measure of success for accounts payable is no payments error. Obviously this is huge, right? Uh, you're, you're spending the company's money you gotta make sure you're accurate, that you're not making errors in making payments, right? So if, for example, a payment is $1,000 and you put an extra zero, it turns into $10,000. So you can see here where I'm going with this is that accuracy is important. So you gotta mention to the hiring manager uh, the importance of no payment errors, not making um, payment errors, right? And a bonus tip here, if you wanna impress the hiring manager, you speak to identifying accruals, right? So. Identifying accruals means that you are someone who works in accounts payable. Uh, you expect to get an invoice from a certain vendor. Let's say a vendor X was supposed to send an invoice for $10,000 for a certain expense, and you didn't get that invoice. You didn't receive it. So you are the best person who can flag this accrual to the accounting team and say, hey, I didn't receive this invoice. We are we're supposed to accrue for this expense in our books and records in order to close the books, right? So identifying where an invoice has been received and flagging that as an accrual to the accounting team is a huge bonus step in when the hiring manager, personally, when I hear that as a controller, when I hear that from a candidate, I am thoroughly impressed. So you need to mention uh, identifying accruals in accounts payable. All right, question number three in my list what is the difference between public and private accounting? And this may seem as a basic question to you, but in this question, the hiring manager is trying to gauge your general knowledge of the difference between public and private accounting. So let's break it down a little bit. So for public accounting, it's obviously a service, right? And it could come in the form of audit or tax or advisory service and usually is uh, provided by someone with a high level of certification. It could be a certified public accountant or CPA. Uh, if it's audit, if it's tax, it usually is either a CPA or an enrolled agent or sometimes attorney. Um, and then if it's advisory, it could be CPA if it's an advisory related to accounting services, or it could be a CFA or a certified financial advisor if it's related more to the strategic finance of things, right? So public accounting is gonna come in the form of audit tax or advisory service. Now, on the private accounting side, this is the actual process of creating the books or records for a private or a publicly traded entity, right? So this is when you work in the inside of the company as an accountant and keep track of the books and records, 
compile the financial statements and create the footnote and the financial disclosures for the company, right? So public accounting is a service provided by a public accounting firm. Uh, private accounting is the process of creating the books of records for the company that you work for and the inside of the company and the accounting department. All right, question number four and a very common question in accounting interviews is what is the difference between accounts payable and accounts receivable? And at the beginning of this video, we've covered the success in AR and the success in AP. You might want to go back to that if you want to, but let's recap here because the hiring manager is just looking for your um, logical breakdown of the differences, right? So looking just to hear you out and see how you will present what the differences are between accounts receivable and accounts payable, right? So to summarize accounts receivable process, it's the process of invoice creation, communication of these invoices to clients, right? So you gotta send the invoices out to your clients and then the subsequent cash collection. But it also involves the issuance of credit memos. And credit memos, to give you an idea, is when you give a sort of a refund to a client, right? So if you issue an invoice for $1,000 to a client for a service and they call you up and they're extremely unhappy with the service and you offer them a partial refund, this is what we call a credit memo, right? So if the service is $1,000, you might offer them $200 in a credit memo, which will offset and reduce what they owe from $1,000 to $800. So this is the process of accounts receivable. And for the accounts payable process, to summarize, this is the process of collecting and receiving invoices from vendors and suppliers, and then recording and coding these invoices into the accounting package, right? So if you receive an invoice from a supplier, you gotta enter it in, let's say, QuickBooks, and you have to select the GL account, which, which expense account is gonna hit. And also you gotta select a department, for example. So let's say it's an invoice related to human resources or the operation team, you gotta select which department it pertains to. This is what we are referring to when we say coding the invoice into the accounting package, right? And then creating the payments. So creating the payments obviously is in the form of check or ACH or wire. So this is part of the accounts receivable process and then managing the payment information. So you're managing banking information from clients. Usually you keep this information secure in the accounting system or in the bank website. Uh, so you're managing the payment information. This is just to summarize the accounts payable process. And a bonus tip here on the difference between accounts receivable and accounts payable, if you really wanna impress the hiring manager, is that you can mention that the process of accounts receivable is referred to as order to cash, right? So why we call it order to cash? is that because it refers to the process from receiving an order from customers all the way to uh, sending an invoice and receiving cash. So we call that order to cash, right? And the flip side on the accounts payable side, we call that procure to pay, right? So procure refers to the process of engaging a vendor and getting the service from that vendor or the goods, and then all the way to getting an invoice and then payment to that vendor. So that's called procure to pay. So the accounts receivable refers to the process of order to cash, and the accounts payable process also is referred to as the process of procure to pay. All right, question number five on my list is related to inventory accounting, and this is more relevant to someone who's applying for an accounting role that's gonna be handling inventory. So the question goes, what is perpetual inventory system and how is it different from a periodic inventory system? So the key words here is perpetual inventory versus periodic inventory, right? So let me break it down to you in plain language first and then I'll give you more of the polished answer you can give during the interview. So basically in plain language, when if you're selling TVs, let's say you're Best Buy and you're selling TVs, uh, if you're running perpetual inventory, it means that you're recording the reduction of inventory uh, real time. So if the, you sell the TV during the day, you reduce the inventory and you record the cost of goods sold in the same day, uh, real time, right? If you are running periodic um, inventory, then you're only doing this at month end or a period end, right? So let's say you only take count of the inventory every month end. That's when you're realizing that you sold one TV and at that point you reduce your inventory and you poke the cost of goods sold. So again, in plain language, perpetual inventory means real time recording of the purchase or sale of inventory, while periodic means at the end of each period, right? So it's very simple. Uh, the way to give this as a polished answer in the interview could be something like this. So perpetual inventory is a method of accounting uh, for inventory that records the sale or purchase of inventory immediately or real time through the use of computerized point of sale systems and an enterprise uh, asset management software. 
On the other hand, the periodic inventory system uses an occasional physical count to measure the level of inventory and the cost of goods sold. All right, question number six and the final question today, what is your role within the month end close process? So basically this is a month end close question and don't stress too much because you're not expected to know the entire month end close process, right? This is a staff accountant position you're applying for. This is not a controller position. You're not supposed to answer everything related to month end close, but just speak to your role uh, in the month end close process, right? So, uh, so just speak to what you did. So if you worked in accounts receivable, you can just speak to what you've done in terms of billing and sending invoices to customers, collecting the cash, applying that cash to the open invoices in the system. Just speak to that, describe the process, right? That contributes to the month end close. And if you work more on the expenses side, speak to that as well. So if you work on uh, the AP side, you receive invoices, you code them in the system, you, you pay out the cash, you apply these payments to the open uh, vendor invoices, speak to that and explain the process. What the hiring manager is looking for here um, is you know, gauging your awareness of your role and how it contributes to month, month end close. So try to tie what you do to the month end close. So if it's accounts receivable, you know, billing obviously will, will then book revenue on the books. So booking revenue and accounts receivable on the balance sheet, right? If you work in the expenses side, your role will record the expenses, will get all the expenses in the system and also will record the accounts payable on the balance sheet. And that's it. These are my six questions for staff accountants interview. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.